Welcome back to the Redefine FX YouTube channel everyone. So today we're doing this viscoelastic cloth, which really just means memory foam or cloth that returns back to its original state. I would like to thank Autodesk for sponsoring this video and let's jump right into it. So this is the reference that this effect is based on. It's the Logitech MX Master 3S product video. The link is in the description if you'd like to check out this trailer. Okay, so let's start by creating a regular cylinder in the middle of our scene. Make it about this big, raise it up. Let's give it 64 sides and two segments. And then you can hit A and just rotate it exactly 90 degrees. Next, let's go under Create Shapes and make a rectangle and just drag out a rectangle about like this. Then you need to right click, make it an editable spline and um, select these two vertices, scroll down under fillet and then just fillet the corners. Something like this should work. And then you can right click, make it an editable poly and we need to go under modifiers and just hit Q and add a quadify mesh operator and we can set the quad size to 3%. And then you can right click again, collapse all, yes. So you have an editable poly again. So now let's click align and align this plane to your cylinder and just say center, center, align orientation on X, Y, and Z, say okay. Raise this up, rotate it 90 degrees this way. And now we need to basically move the pivot of this plane to the center of the cylinder so we can make the copies around the cylinder. Go into your front view and then you can go under hierarchy, effect pivot only, and move the pivot into the center of the cylinder. So zoom in, put it you know roughly in the center and you can get out of, uh, pivot mode so click on this again and then if you hit E to rotate you're now able to rotate the plane basically along the cylinder like this all right so with the plane selected you can hit E for rotate and then hit A and this should get enabled the angle snap toggle right click on that and change the angle here to one degree so this means that we can just rotate this in one degree increments and then hold shift on your keyboard and rotate it and make a copy just one degree away like this. And we're gonna make um, 30 copies going this way and then select it in the middle again, hold shift, copy, move it one degree and make 30 copies this way, right? So we're getting something like this. And lastly, we're gonna need a sphere. So just go under standard, create, make a regular sphere here, align it to the cylinder, center, center, move it up. And this is what will disturb um, the cloth. So I found that it's good if it's slightly larger, maybe something like this. And then again, go into your front view, go under hierarchy, pivot, and move the pivot of the sphere in the center of the cylinder as well. So, just like this, turn that off. And now you can just move the sphere to the beginning of these planes so that it's not touching. Enable auto key, um, set your timeline to maybe 200 frames and go to frame about 120 and go to the end of this like that. So if you've been following along, you should have something like this happening. And for the sphere, we can select the keyframes and make them linear so that the sphere is moving at the same speed all the way through. So at this point, we can move on to the tie flow portion. So I'll just make a tie flow here. You can also make a selection set. So I'll just select all of these planes and just name this my cloth planes. And this way, even if I deselect them, I can just go into the selection set and I have all of them selected. So we need to turn them into cloth. You can just do birth objects at selected then we need a cloth bind operator and for the display we can just do small dots so for the binding stiffness i did one for everything um, because we want this to be a pretty stiff cloth now also notice that there are gaps um, between the cloth so 
what we're gonna do is enable the CUDA cloth collision solver. I set the thickness to 0.5 centimeters and enable self collision, enable self thickness and set this to 0.5 centimeters as well. This does exactly what it says. It gives more thickness to the collisions so that there remain some gaps between the individual pieces of the cloth at all times and it gives us this nicer look. Also right now they have no thickness so under mesh you can add shell to surface set the inner amount to zero and outer amount i did 0 0.15 height etched faces and we have something like this so we need it to collide with the sphere so let's add a collision operator pick the sphere we can give it a radius of one centimeter for the collisions i did no friction um, but you can do 50 percent for bounce because we want the cloth to just um, you know, bounce off of the sphere, not get stuck to it or anything. So at this point, make sure that you save your work. So now if you go forward on your timeline and run the simulation, you should be getting something like this. Several problems. Number one, um, the cloth is not stuck to the cylinder, so it's just floating away. And number two, it's not returning to its original state. So this is what we're basically trying to achieve. We want the cloth to be disturbed, but then return back to where it started, just like some kind of a memory foam. So one thing at a time, first let's get them stuck to the cylinder. So I'll just add a surface test, pick the cylinder, set it to distance of about 10 centimeters, move it into a new event. So if um, the cloth particles are within 10 centimeters to the cylinder, they should get stuck to it. So we know that we need an object bind. So I'll just pick the cylinder again and say lock the surface. So you can see that the particles changed color. We can make them red to make it clear that they're deactivated and make them large dots, right? So all of these particles that are within 10 centimeters to the cylinder are stuck to the cylinder. So if I run the simulation now, okay, so this is what it looks like right now. Um, the only problem is that these particles continue to get deactivated if they get close enough to the cylinder. So we need to go back under the surface test and set the timing to on event entry so that this only happens once in the very beginning. So to get this cloth to return to its original state, we're going to need custom properties. So let's just add a custom properties operator here. Scroll down to TM and just, you know, select TM and name it my tm and then we need to somehow tell tieflow that the cloth is being activated and then tell it to return back to where it was before so now we need to add a property test and basically i want to say that if the particles of the cloth are moving i want them to be sent to another event so i'll set this to velocity magnitude and say that if the magnitude is greater then a value of 0.5 so basically if it's moving at all then i want it to be sent into this new event where i want them to wait for a little bit because we want to get that nice wavy motion and after it does its wave then we want it to begin slowly returning back so i'll add a time test in here and say that once they've been in this event for 20 frames with zero frame variation, I want them to be sent into the final event where um, they should get their position back. So I'll add another custom properties operator here, but this time we need to set it to get because we're getting the information from this custom properties in the first event. We need to set the timing to continuous and for the TM, I wanna say, TM and for the channel, I want to say my TM. Um, before we run the sim, I also need to add the collision operator into this event also, otherwise they will just stop colliding with the sphere. So right click on the collision and say copy and then come over here and say paste instanced. I'm doing instanced on purpose. This way, if I add more colliders into here, they will also update in this one, right? It's just an instance. So let's run the sim and see what this looks like. All right, so we have something like this. We're almost there, except what's happening right now is these cloth particles are snapping back to their original position in just one frame. They're just snapping instead of slowly returning. 
So we need to go back under our custom properties here and set the interpolation to 0.1, which means that they will be slowly returning to this original transform matrix over time. And let's also add a slow operator to slow them down even more. All right, so everything is working. We can just hide our collision sphere and then turn off the display for all these particles. And this is what we have, right? So the cloth gets pushed down and then it's slowly returning back to um, where it started. Now, if you wanted to make it even more wavy, you can add um, some turbulence into this event. So we can just add a force here and set the strength to maybe 0 0.25. And I think I did 0 0.01 for the scale. So this will just add a bit more wrinkles to the cloth as it gets disturbed. You can also go under your main um, tie flow settings here and set the time step to half a frame. You can also slow it down even more so you can go back under custom properties and maybe set the interpolation to just 0.08. And you can also increase this slow operator to maybe 10%. And you can also go under modifiers and just add a turbo smooth right on top of tie flow to smooth it out nicely. So if I just do shift F for my save frames, put my camera in place, maybe rotate it this way and run the sim. And here you go. This is what we're getting right now. So it's working beautifully. Now, if you compare it with our final result, we are basically there. So now as for the materials, what you can do is just make a box here and we can go under materials and make just a V-Ray material, click on the diffuse and select the gradient ramp, set it to radial, apply it to the box and say show map in viewport. And this is what I did for the color. So you can just pause the video and look at this. Uh, you might want to give it a little bit of reflection, make it not completely shiny. So like 0 0.7 for the glossiness. Apply this to tie flow as well. Uh, but the mapping isn't really working, so we need to go back into tie flow and let's add a mapping operator, put it under um, cloth bind. And I want to say mapping from objects and just pick um, the box and it will map the colors onto your tie flow based on the box. So you can just hide the box, you can make this cylinder not renderable. And then, of course, we can just add some lights. So V ray, V ray light. Maybe make a copy, set the multiplier to two. And then if we just enable the V-Ray frame buffer and you should end up with something like this. All right, and one final tip I'll give you in case you wanted to make this completely loopable because some of these final pieces, they take time to return back to their original position. And then there will be a bit of a snap when you try to loop it. So you can just select tie flow again and add the tie looper modifier. We want to set the start frame to zero and frame is 200 for us and the blend frames all set to 40 frames. So from frame 160 to 200, it will start blending with the first frame in the sequence to make it perfectly loopable. So we want to loop at the end, not at the beginning. So that's all good. And I found that it's good to give it a little bit of a curve. So you can just double click, make a point and move this like this just to give it nice ramp as it's looping the sim. So I'll just do shift V to make a type preview and show you what this looks like. All right, so this is the final preview of our final result. It's completely loopable. So it starts, starts returning, then the tie looper kicks in, puts it back to where it was on frame zero and the loop starts again. So let this play free one more time. Watch as it reaches the end and starts again. Right, so we covered a lot in this tutorial, custom properties, clause simulations, condition operators, tie looper, lots of good stuff. Hope that you guys found this helpful. If you did, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not already. I'll be uploading more in the future. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.